Thank you, Senator Rice. Senator Reynolds. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Acting Deputy President. I too rise today to speak on the Treasury Law Amendment Enterprise Tax Plan Bill 2017. And I do so with uh, great pleasure and also recognising that, that this is one of the most important pieces of legislation to actually come before this chamber in many years and one that is actually vitally important for the future prosperity of our nation. I've just been sitting there listening to uh, Senator Rice and I almost could not believe what I was hearing. And in fact, if any year seven economics and business student uh, actually read the transcript of Senator Rice's uh, contribution this morning or tried to apply her version of economics to their own year seven economics exams, they would fail dismally. Now, we heard and we hear constantly from those opposite now about trickle-down economics. We hear about uh, you know, the big end of town. But that is all, uh, it's all rhetoric. And what, we, and what we also just heard from the previous contribution is all about the desire for infrastructure expenditure on uh, roads and other large projects. We too believe in infrastructure spending. But what any year seven economic student knows is that there is no such thing as government money. Now, what we heard is a long list of where we should be spending money, but of course from the Greens there was absolutely nothing about where that money is going to come from. They are completely divorced from reality. As the great Margaret Thatcher said and reminded us that there is no such thing as government money. That money is taxpayers' money. It comes out of the pockets of hard-working Australians and Australian companies who actually employ those Australians. Now, this measure, which I am very proud of, is a pillar of the coalition's economic plan to ensure that Australia remains competitive as nations all over the world realise a lower corporate tax rate is the key to economic growth and creation. So let's have a look at the facts here in Australia so far. Let's get beyond the re rhetoric of trickle-down economics, which I actually don't think they actually understand the concepts of, that they're spruiking. But let's have a look at this. We do live in a global economy. There is no fortress Australia. Our economy, our future wealth generation in terms of jobs and all of the money that the Greens want to spend on infrastructure projects has to come from somewhere and it will not be generated solely internally within Australia. So we do have to be competitive. Now, the government has already passed legislation that backs small business by reducing their tax rate from 30 per cent to 27.5 per cent, starting with businesses with a turnover of less than $10 million on 1 July this year, last year. In total, the legislative changes to date will support 3.2 million businesses with a turnover of up to $50 million that actually employ it is these small businesses that employ 6.7 million Australians, hard-working Australians. This is hardly what they sort of d refer to as the big end of town. 6.7 million Australians employed by small business. And small business is now employing more Australians because they are more competitive with a more competitive tax rate. So let's just have a look at uh, the facts. Again, forget the sort of rhetoric about you know, the politics of division and envy and everybody's worse off. So let's have a look at the impact of the policies that this government has implemented for small businesses and uh, what that has had a result of. So let's have a look at the facts. The fact is that we have now had 16 consecutive months of job growth, the longest period of job growth in our history, 16 consecutive months of job growth. Those opposite should be dancing in the streets that we have now created. Uh, 971,500 new jobs have been created. Not old jobs, new jobs have been created. An increase of 8.5 per cent. Total employment is now at a record high because we are, making, we are entering into free trade agreements so that we can export more, we can employ more, and we get more money for those projects so loved by the Greens, because the money has to come from somewhere. And so what have we created through these policies of actually allowing business to do business here and overseas and to be more competitive? On average, 1,100 new Australian jobs are being created every single day. 
So again, what do we hear from those opposite? Not congratulations. We are creating today 1,100 Australians have got jobs, most of them full-time jobs, and you should be shouting from the rooftops that the majority of those jobs are for women and in terms of increasing women's participation in the workforce. So it is very clear that our economic policies are driving confidence and investment. And the key to stronger wage growth are policies that both grow the economy and strengthen our labour market, again by making our companies more competitive. Absolutely. By signing up to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that will lead to an additional significant job growth in Australia. We've seen that already with the free trade agreements that have been signed by this government. It means an additional 1,100 new jobs every day, 16 consecutive months of jobs growth, and not a word from those opposite. Now let's have a look at what is happening overseas, because as I've said, we do not live, we live on an island, but we do not generate the wealth here. We have to trade with other nations. We have to make sure that our companies, big and small, are competitive and have access to overseas markets so that we can create jobs. At the moment, we're creating over 1,100 jobs a day, and measures like the TPP will make sure and ensure, and this tax cut now, will make sure that companies can employ more. So hopefully we'll get 1,200, 1,300 new jobs a day as a result of these increasing measures. But let's have a look. Let's have a look at what our competitors overseas are doing. In recent years, a large number of our international competitors, so companies that reside in Canada, Singapore, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Norway, Israel, Japan and France, have all reduced their company taxes. Why? Because they know they need to be competitive in the international market to stimulate jobs and businesses and income to pay for domestic services. So in December last year, the United States slashed business tax from 35 per cent to 21 per cent—21 per cent, a measure that is clearly demonstrably yielding results in the United States in terms of jobs growth. Now, if Australia's rate was to remain at 30 per cent, Australia will then have one of the highest company taxation rates in the OECD making it all the much harder for Australian companies to compete in fiercely competitive global markets. So having the free trade agreements is very important, but we also have to make it competitive in terms of tax rates so our companies can compete, win business, sell goods and services and employ more Australians and pay higher wages. Now those opposite who traditionally supported meaningful and bipartisan tax reform have abandoned all economic reason for the philosophical beliefs that somehow continuing to have one of the highest corporation tax rates in the world and in the OECD will somehow magically make us a more prosperous nation to pay for all of those services that the Greens were saying will actually fix the problem. Well, they won't. We need lower company tax rates to increase our economy to pay for those very services. The IMF's World Economic Outlook released last year warned that the US corporations tax cut plan will cut Australia's GDP by 1% and that means jobs and also lower wages. So this is the IMF themselves saying that the US corporation tax cut will cut Australia's GDP by 1% and threaten the sustainability of Australia's tax system unless Australia responds. This is consistent with Australian Treasury analysis. And it is also consistent with any student who studied year seven or year eight economics. That is the way international eco you know, economy works. So we as a nation must recognise that the international tax scene has changed and we are not immune from it. The case for an Australian response is overwhelming. The government's enterprise tax plan is a sound and a sensible response to changing global economic circumstances. Treasury themselves have said that the adverse impacts on Australia of US tax reform could in effect be offset by the implementation of the government's enterprise tax plan. Now, Australia benefits from our openness in investment, which allows us to build on our resources, employ more hardworking Australians and trade our goods and services on a global market. But again, I remind those in this chamber that as the mobility of global capital increases, 
Australia's high corporate tax rate can and will deter this investment. Why would large global companies come to Australia if we are not competitive in terms of our taxation? Ultimately, this again will lead to lower wages and less money for infrastructure and social investment spending. So let's have a look at the hypocrisy of those opposite. And I know many of those opposite did year seven and year eight economics, and in fact, for many years, those opposite were supportive of lower company tax rates because they know the implications for our economy if we don't keep up with those we trade and engage with. So let's have a look at what former Prime Minister Julie Gillard said in the other place. And she said this, if you are against cutting company tax, you are against economic growth. If you are against economic growth, then you are against jobs. So this is not those of us on this side saying that. This is the Labor Party acknowledging basic economics. The ALP. The ALP. Prime Minister Gillard. And so what has Mr Shorten said on this? Mr Shorten, who has a long history of backflipping on almost, in fact, probably every important national issue. So what did Bill Shorten say not so long ago on this very issue? He said exactly the same thing as Julia Gillard. He said this, the government's tax reform agenda has a strong focus on ensuring that Australia remains competitive and an attractive place to invest. Cutting the company tax rate is an important step along this road. I'll say that again. Bill Shorten himself said cutting the company tax rate is an important step along this road, because this will recognise the benefit to investment and growth from lower company tax and a trend towards lower tax rates across the OECD over the past 30 years. Now, I said at the beginning of this that I believe this is one of the most important, if not the most important, piece of legislation for our economic future in this country. And given that Bill Shorten clearly understood not so long ago the importance of cutting tax rates here, the importance for our economy and for jobs, he is doing little more than sabotaging this country's economic future. And it is very consistent now with his pre-budget and his pre-election positioning on his messaging. And sadly for this country, it is a message of division and envy and not of recognising that this government has created almost a million new jobs, 16 months of unbroken growth in jobs. And all I can say is shame on the Labor Party for doing this on this issue, because we do need to compete globally. We do need to keep uh, foreign investment coming in. We do need new business opportunities. And as Bill Shorten said, in fact, I'll remind you of what Julie Gillard said, because it is very, very wise. If you are against cutting company tax, you are against economic growth. And if you are against economic growth, you are against jobs. We know, as those opposite actually know, a more competitive business tax environment will encourage higher levels of investment in Australia, both for small and large businesses. And we've seen the effect that the company, that the company tax rate for smaller businesses has had on their growth and also their employment rates. So, Despite the fact that Labor very clearly understand that lower taxes is unequivocally good for our economy and jobs, what is their approach? Labor oppose the enterprise tax plan and a reduction in company tax rates because it actually has said it wants higher taxes, it wants reduced investment, fewer jobs and lower uh, wages. Shame on them. Bill Shorten is reported to have told business leaders to expect nothing from a Shorten Labor government. Now they might demonise big business, as they keep referring and sneering at it, but it is small and big businesses who employ Australians. Governments do not generate money and they do not generate jobs. The private sector does. Bill Shorten and Labor have such little respect for small business that they refuse to tell them about their secret plan to reverse the already legislated tax cuts for small to medium-sized businesses. These are the millions of mum and dad businesses across this country who work their guts out to set up their businesses, to keep their business going and to employ fellow Australians. 
Now, as we've seen from the, the, these quotes and quotes uh, from some of my other colleagues who have uh, talked on this already, Labor know that company tax will boost jobs, it will lift wages and it will lift investment because they used to support these very policies, as we've heard. And in Shadow Treasurer Chris Bowen's own words, it is a Labor thing to have the ambition of reducing company tax because it promotes investment, creates jobs and drives growth. That is the Shadow Treasurer. Again, like uh, so many others and Bill Shorten, saying one thing, clearly having the ability to pass Year 7 and Year 8 economics, but then when they want to position themselves pre-budget and pre-election with their policies of division and envy, then they will jettison the economic future of this country. Canadian tax expert Jack Mintz has pointed out that it is a myth that company taxes are paid by the rich and the powerful. Mintz has said repeated studies show that at least two-thirds of company tax is shifted onto labour through higher consumption prices, wage cuts and also layoffs of staff. We know that is true because we have seen it here in Australia. And we know the converse is true because we have seen now with small business tax cuts and other support for small business, they are growing and they are employing more Australians at record rates. And in a similar vein, our own Treasury has pointed out that while company tax is paid by companies, the burden is passed on to shareholders, consumers and employees. The Tax Foundation in the United States found that for every one dollar raised a rise, so for every one dollar rise in state and local corporate tax collections, real wages fell by $2.5 had fallen by $2.5 five years later. So for every one dollar rise in state and local uh, company taxes, real wages fell by $2.5 over five years. But they've also unsurprisingly found that the reverse is true. Wages have actually risen in the United States by $2.50 for every $1 reduction in state and local corporation taxes. The simple and undeniable fact is that higher corporate taxes end up hurting workers the most. The longer-term benefits of a lower corporate tax rate accrue to workers and to households through permanently higher after-tax real wages and consumption. And in the Financial Review earlier this year, Richard Holden observed that a recent empirical study by three German economists published in the flagship American Economic Review contained an, indig an ingenious way to get at the, ca the causal effect of company tax rates on wages. And they utilised the fact that in Germany the company tax rate is determined in part by the federal government and in part by local government. This gave rise to a staggering 18,000 tax changes in 10,000 municipalities over a 10-year period. But what they found at the end of this analysis is that, on average, workers bear 51 per cent of the total company tax burden. So they clearly showed through very detailed analysis what they found in America, that the higher the company tax, the greater the burden on workers than anybody else. They also found that higher company taxes reduce wages for the low-skilled for women and younger workers disproportionately. So, this, the Turnbull government wants to give all hard-working Australians the opportunity to earn more and to be rewarded for their efforts. The enterprise tax plan is a critical step in our economic transition. And as we look to encourage private investment across the economy to generate broader-based economic growth, this legislation, as I said at the beginning, is one of the most important pieces of legislation to come before this chamber. And no matter what no matter the fact that the Greens clearly have failed in their Year 7 and Year 8 economics, uh, obviously thinking that uh, national wealth is found at the bottom of a garden through you know, sprinkling of fairy dust, we have to go out and businesses have to earn money. And this has demonstrated to work for small businesses in this country, just as it will work uh, for larger businesses in this country. And I would conclude by saying, shame on you and those opposite. You know, every single one of you who stand up and now speak against this bill know that this is important for this nation. You are on the record, your shadow treasurer, your leader are repeatedly on the record saying that lower company tax is critically important to jobs growth and to uh, the future prosperity of our nation. So it is not too late, and I commend those on the crossbench who have taken this issue seriously. 
and who do understand the importance of this for our future. It's not too late for Labor to change their mind and do the right thing, but I'm certain they won't. Thank you.